the hairball. Up with Christy and Nina. We're doing <clears throat> a Valentine's Day theme today. And you know, I should have put in the title slash Festival of the Arts or Farts stuff. You could, you could still do that. Yeah, I'll do it afterwards, I suppose. Okay. Or I guess I could, where do like open another stream yards, right? To do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just do that now. And just um, edit the title. Yeah. Once again, Christy will be doing makeup and I will be talking the whole time. <laughs> Let's see. I've got it. Magical Makeup with Christy and Lena Festival of the Arts Discussion. How's that? Dis discussions. We sound fancy now. No, we're fancy. We're fancy. All right, done. Okay. All right, now um, we'll just go ahead and put the Festival of the Arts up there. Uh, we don't usually get a whole lot of new people in, but um, uh -uh. we can tell tell people about ourselves if we want. I don't mind. If we get somebody new, we can. Yeah, that sounds good. Man, that looks hey, good. Cool. <laughs> hey, cool gamer. So we'll go back up here. So as typical, I will be reading and sharing information from the Disney Parks blog. This is directly from Disney, and we like to have Disney as our main source. Um, we sometimes will reference other sites like Touring Plans or Disney Parks blog, but when we can, we do like to use Disney as our main sources of information. Ooh, I cannot have that in my mouth and talk at the same time. I felt like I was doing like, like, whoo. What was it? I it's an ice, an icebreaker sour. Oh, I, I was trying to talk to you, and I hadn't forgotten to do this in a long time. What? Dampen my sponges. Did you forget again? Yeah, but I hadn't forgotten in a long time. Um. So this is the from January fifth from again the Disney Parks blog. This is the Disney Eats Foodie Guide. So. This may not be all of what is being offered at Festival of the Arts, but this is a good representation um, of what is is at Festival of the Arts, or some people call it Farts, Festival of the Arts. So it's for, so people in the Disney community call it the Farts Festival. So um, what I think is highly entertaining is that once again, we have the Figment Popcorn Bucket. It is the same popcorn bucket as last year. Just the a different only, store, right? The only thing that's different is it has a 40th anniversary strap. I'm like, but how how much do you want to bet that somebody that bought it last year bought it again this year just because it has a different strap? Probably. But, I mean, it sold out so quickly last year. It was going for hundreds of dollars online. It was. Um, they, so they, you know, they're only mobile. They're only doing mobile yes. orders this year. That's crazy. Yes. They are only doing it as a mobile order, which I think will is a much better way to do it. Simply okay. because then you, it's not, it doesn't create the long lines in the bottleneck, especially with all the construction still going on at Epcot. Sometimes the walkways can get pretty narrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we are going to. This is the Disney Eats Foodie Guide. So we're going to start with the Pop Eats booth, which is near the port of entry. And it is famous for its tomato soup with grilled cheese. And I know you're probably thinking, okay, grilled cheese and tomato soup, I can get that anywhere. Um, it doesn't show it in this picture, but typically the tomato soup comes in a fun little can and it's really, really cute. This one is just like a plain little boring cup. And I think for like photo purposes, but um, if, if you go to YouTube and you look up farts and the food guide and stuff, um, you will see the can and it's so super cute. I almost didn't put this one on my list to try, but then I did. But I, I wasn't, I had it on either this one or the one that has the pimento cheese, that mm -hmm. whatever they the call next, it. The next, the tomato soup with pimento cheese, bacon, and fried green tomato grilled cheese. Yeah. And that and is new for this year. I mean, it does just sound like something you can get anywhere, but. 
I think after watching different blogs, I was like, yeah, I'm going to put it on the list. Um, and then they like, they have the cookie stroll and they have, they have the different things during that you can do during the festival. This, they have the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. And this is one of the items. It is the almond Fraggle pain cake laid with raspberry jam and Belgian chocolate. And that is on the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. Then they have a Brooklyn Brewery Pulp Art Hazy IPA and a Blanc de Blue Cuvée Mousseau Mousse, Mousse with boba pearls. So I have a question for you. If it's about my pronunciation, deal with it. Uh, no, uh, I would never question that because I'm just as bad, if not worse. Um, okay, what's up? So I'm always skipping the beer ones because I'm just not a beer connoisseur. Okay. Should okay. I add the beers to my list? Um, I would say that's probably a personal choice um, because you are going down for Princess. Um, I would, I would look at how far, like, when you're getting there, when you're going to be doing farts, when the 5k is, and then decide from there, um, is it going to dehydrate you too much um, prior to doing the 5k? Well, farts is the 20th for me and the 5k, if I recall, is either the 24th or the 25th. So I should be good in terms of drinkage. Okay. I'm just not like a beer connoisseur. So my question really more is like, are these specialty beers that may have different flavor than regular beers? Um, I would say yes and no. Um, if you're not really a beer person, I probably wouldn't waste the money on it because the beers, even the small pours can be pretty pricey. Um, if you were going with someone who like enjoyed beers, that would be like, yeah, if you don't like it, I'll go ahead and drink it. Or somebody was willing to split the cost of like a flight with you for you to be able to try some of them, then I would find it different. But I would say that if you're just not a beer person, I probably wouldn't waste the money on it. You triggered my thought process. So my sister's husband is a beer drinker and he will probably order beers and I could just take a sip to try them of his. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And I don't have to split the cost because I'm not going to pay for it if I'm just taking a sip. Um, and what a lot of, and I've seen a lot of bartenders do it on TikTok. They take a straw, put it in it, cover the top, pull it out, and that gives them enough of a taste without yeah. having to share a container with somebody. Yeah. So the next one is called the, um, it's called the Deconstructed Dish, again, near Port of Entry. Um, the first one is a deconstructed BLT, pork belly, a soft post egg, Soft poached egg, onion bread pudding, watercress, SM puma, and tomato jam. And I'm sorry, that sounds awful. That one is on my list just because it's pork belly and not just bacon. Um, they have a deconstructed French onion soup, beef broth, ravioli, gruyere cream, onion bread pudding, and onion textures. And then they have a on the list as potential because I'm not really as, like, I don't know, it just seems weird to have a deconstructed French onion soup that's not soupy. Right. The last one is the deconstructed key lime pie. It's a flexible lot key lime curd, key lime mousse, graham cracker cake, and meringues. And key lime mousse being in quotes, like, makes me nervous. <laughs> like, oh, that was on actually list. I'll have to let you know for sure. And again, it is part of the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. So if I am taking a wild guess, I'm assuming that one of these is the picture with the lime is obviously the deconstructed key lime pie. And the other one is the deconstructed BLT I, because this, the, the picture that yeah, I that's need in the belly. back, well, it looks like the pork belly. Yeah. It looks like chocolate mousse, but it's pork belly. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the beverages, they have a deconstructed apple pie a la mode, apple cinnamon gelato, cinnamon apple cider, apple pie filling, and streusel, and it is non-alcoholic. Is that one on your list? Um, it's on my sister's list, and I'm taking Benadryl, so I can taste it. Because you cannot have cinnamon. Correct. 
Um, then they have a Wicked Weed Brewing Blank Canvas Belgian Blonde Whittaber, which is an obviously an ale. Then they have Deco Delights, again near Port of Entry. The Dulce, Dulce Chocolate Mousse, the Chocolate Creme, and Dark Chocolate Truffle. A Decadent Valrona Chocolate with Dark Chocolate Mousse, Chocolate Brownie, and Cassis Mousse. And an Orange Mousse with Lemon Cake and Raspberry Meringue, again part of the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. So I'm going to guess that this first one is the um, Decadent Vlahara Chocolate. And I think the cult, the pretty bright colored one is the orange mousse for the wonderful walk of color. But it's so pretty and bright, vibrant. I can't see that that would not be the one that's on the wonderful walk of color. That one's on my list. Actually, both of them are. But if I have to pick one, it will be the prettier one. Um, the beverages, they have Three Daughters Brewing Strawberry Blonde Nitro. Okay, I will say that when Sam and I were there for Festival of the Holidays, we did have a couple um, in um, Morocco, part of a beer flight that was from Three Daughters Brewing, and we really did like them. They tasted really good. So if you want to, if you're going, I think I might want to try something. I would try this Three Daughters Brewing Strawberry Blonde Nitro. You may really like it. Okay. Uh, because I had their cranberry, whatever their cranberry one was, and it was so good. They have a 81 day bra 81 bay brewing company vanilla porter, Plandana Brewing Company Milk Stout, an espresso martini featuring Boyd and Blair potato vodka, which is new this year, and a Neapolitan beer flight. If you also you could try that espresso espresso martini. Yeah, you know, I was looking at that and it's just the thing is like I like coffee. But I typically don't like coffee and alcohol together. Is that weird? No. So the next one is the Craftsman Courtyard, which is near the Creation Shop, which is towards the... The Creation Shop is up in Future World. Correct? Um, I can tell you. I, I made mine in order. Oh, I know. The, the Craftsman's Courtyard. Near okay, this is going to be in the back area. Um, I'm assuming kind of where they had the um, the butterfly garden or the last year for Flower and Garden and where they had the roasted chestnuts at Christmas. Um, the food items is a beef wellington, mushroom deluxes, prosecco, and puff pastries with Red wine, demi glaze, and baby vegetables. Hello, Sh Shari. Welcome in. That beef Wellington's on my list. And it looks pretty good. And then cast iron roasted PEI. And if you don't know what PEI stands for, it actually stands for Prince Edward Island, which is up in the up in Canada. Mussels with sauteed tomatoes, garlic, and fresh herbs. And the only way I know what PEI stands for is because I read Anne, Gre Anne of Green Gables growing up. And that's PEI, so funny because I was about to say that's where it was filmed, too. Yeah. So I read that's that's the only way I know what PEI stands for. <laughs> that's because I read it in Anne of Green Gables. Um it the I can't have I cannot have um seafood, but that like the way they've presented it in the little dish is actually very pretty. So that one's going to be a maybe for me. I have this thing where I don't like to eat fish that comes from the sea in a landlocked area. Okay. And that though that's Florida, it's still landlocked. It's not like right at the ocean. Right. I get that. Sam is the same way. Ever since we lived out in um, the Seattle area and he had fresh salmon, like, he, he won't eat a whole lot of, like, salmon anymore. He's like, because I know it won't taste right. Yeah. See, um, it all depends on if it's imported in fresh, meaning never frozen, or if it's frozen. If it's frozen, it is not going to taste good. And I wonder if you, I wonder if someone has, on one of their uh, vlogs, has tried the rest of the mussels, and you could see what they thought of them. Um. I, yeah, I watched a vlog 
but I don't remember what their review on, on it was. The beverages, the beverages there are a brew dog jet black heart nitro oatmeal stout, which is new for this year, and then a cold fashioned coffee cocktail. Next up is at the refreshment outpost, and this um, is kind of just that little in between section as you're walking around World Showcase. I call it the Africa section because it reminds me of Animal Kingdom. Interesting um, they enough, have, they were supposed to have a contract to put Africa there, and it fell through. Yep. So it's pretty much why it's designed the way it's designed. Yep. Um, the food item is a plant-based bratwurst with a spicy turmeric aioli, coffee, barbecue, jackfruit, and slaw. And it says plant-based item. Well, yes, you just told us it's plant-based bratwurst, so I'm pretty sure we guess it's a plant-based item. <laughs> you never know. Um, they do have the Artist Palette Jumbo Chocolate Chip Cookie. And if you don't know what that is, it's a chocolate chip cookie that I think you can paint with, like, edible, like, icing, right? Yeah, I've heard that that's just more geared towards kids. That it's not really all it's, that great. Yeah. Um, a soft serve waffle cone, dull whip, salted caramel soft serve, or swirl. That does sound good. Um, then for beverages, two of these are new. The Ivanhoe Park Brewing Company Berries and Cream Sour Berliner. That sounds like something that I would try. And from the Left Hand Brewing Company, a Wook Bait IPA. I almost said Wookie. <laughs> Wookie <Yeah>. Bait. <laughs> like the Wookie Cookie in Hollywood Studios. Right. And then Central 28 Beer Company, Wall Art Brown Ale. Moving on to Pastoral Palette, it, which is in the Germany area. They have a red wine braised sh beef short rib with parsnip puree, broccolini, baby tomatoes, and aged balsamic. And they have a wild boar cassoulet with duck, duck confit, ham hock, and wild boar sausage. And then new this year, they have a black forest cake with chocolate mousse and morello cherries and chantilly cream. Beverages are Three Daughters Brewing Rose Hard Cider, 81 Bay Brewing Company Rosé Blonde Ale, a Frozen Rosé, a Play on Rosé Flight, and a Marietta Old Vine Rosé. Surfer Girl says, our Martian Inlet pours out to the Atlantic Ocean here in Myrtle Beach. She said. Yeah, Myrtle Beach area, I'll eat fish. Because it's right there at the ocean. And they have a lot of local local fishermen. The artist's table, which is located at the American American Adventure, has a three-meat meatloaf with peas and carrots, green pea pudding, carrot ketchup, shaved carrot salad, and snap peas. That sounds like something that we would serve at school to trick the kids into eating vegetables. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Uh, they have duck and dumplings, smoked duck breast, ricotta dumplings, petite vegetables, and duck jus. And then hummingbird cake, banana cake with pineapple, coconut pecans, and cream cheese frosting with banana sorbet. That's actually I, on my list. It doesn't really look good, but it's on my list just because it sounds interesting. Okay, my question is, is, is it the same recipe that Homecomings uses because they serve hummingbird cake? Um, the DFB guide said that it's similar, very similar. So what you have to do, Christy, is you have to make a reservation at homecoming. And get I have no back. desire to go to homecoming. It's too it, south, southern for me. Well, you need to go in and try it and then try the hummingbird cake at farts and see what you think. Hmm. Okay. Continuing on. Um, beverages, they have a sipping chocolate flight, white milk and dark chocolate, which is non-alcoholic. Um, it's pretty much from what I understand it, um, from watching other vlogs, the way that you would get a hot chocolate served in like France, um, or Paris, Paris is in France. Um, there's just this really thick melted chocolate. It's not like hot chocolate that you would think of in the U.S. Oh, the hot, they, the hot chocolate flight. 
the sipping chocolate flight. Yeah. Yes. Um, the Boulevard Brewing Company, Tank 7 Farmhouse Ale, Parish Brewing Company, South Coast Site, South Coast Season Amber Ale, Brewery Amagang, Three Philosophers Belgian Quad, Lang Estate Winery Pinot Noir, A Symphony and Chocolate Flight, Chocolate Mozart, Mozart Chocolate Liqueurs paired with Sipping Chocolates, and A Beer Flight. I personally would go with the Symphony and Chocolate, the Mozart Chocolate Liqueurs, because then that, that just sounds more fancy than just, yeah, I'm having Symphony Chocolate, but I am having the Symphony and Chocolate Flight. These are Mozart Chocolate Liqueurs. <laughs> Surfer Girl says she is so excited to be at Festival of the Arts for the first time. That's awesome. I, I and I know a lot of people have commented on this, um, that do marathon weekend because a festival of the arts always starts like the following weekend after marathon mm -hmm. and it's and it ends right before princess i would like because they end they or they don't have that much to do to turn over from festival of the holidays to farts i mean like then it goes festival uh festival of the holidays ends and like the next day you see coming soon signs for farts they literally could start farts the like the day of the expo. So this year that would have been Wednesday the fourth and run it through Princess. Yeah. Or at least like a like a, a day and then just start, you know, Flower and Garden a little after. Like a lot of people have been like, I really wish that because you know we have to leave so earlier, we aren't able to stay that long, that kind of thing. They would a lot of people like you know Sam and I included would like to see um, Bart start just a little bit sooner so that uh, Marathon Weekend participants could go or even if they're like hey if you're participating in Marathon Weekend you um, you can purchase a after hours event ticket to preview um, Festival of the Arts. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um. I, I do think it needs to be a longer uh, festival. It's not very long. No, it's not. Yeah, I know a lot of people said, oh, when I got the survey from Disney for um, Marathon Weekend, I put on that. I'd like to see Fart start you know, with marathon weekend. So like, like around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Sorry. I had to change cause I was getting really warm. No. Uh, continuing on I'm here too. Um, Tangerine cafe flavors of the Medina. Now, as we all know, the country of Morocco, um, has been taken back over by Disney because Morocco of Morocco's financials right now. Um, if you didn't know, um, each of the countries in World Showcase actually pays to be there. Um, they pay for the upkeep and things like that. And Morocco, unfortunately, um, going through an economic decline, it could no longer keep up with it. So Disney took it over. Um, so it's a little different than it used to be, but they do use Tangerine Cafe for Morocco's food booth, which I think is a really good idea because that is a very, very congested area. If you've ever walked through that area when it's busy, it is literally wall to wall people. Yeah, it is pretty busy. So at the Tangerine Cafe, you can get carrots three ways. Chermula spiced grilled carrots, pickled carrots, and carrot ginger puree, which is, this is a plant-based item, and it also gluten and wheat friendly. House-made crispy almond phyllo pockets with white chocolate, pomegranate, and milk chocolate orange. So that's those two pictures that are featured. The house-made almond phyllo pockets look really good. Um, the beverages are a chai tea mint sparkler featuring Twinnies chai tea with Sprite. That sounds weird. Um, Sim Cider's Flockstar Hard Cider, Blake's Hard Cider Company's Mule de Palm, Pomegranate Ginger, and Lime Hard Cider. 
Three Daughters Brewing Chai Hard Cider. Now, this is where we got the, the beer flight that I was talking about earlier was at Tangerine Cafe. Um, there was two that I liked and one that Sam liked. A chai tea mint mimosa featuring Twinnings chai tea with key lime, sparkling wine, and mint, and a cedar flight. Vibrante and Viv Vivdo in Canto Cochina between Morocco and France. Now, um, something that I read online, like everyone knows that a lot of the food stuff at Epcot doesn't open until around 11 o'clock or noon, depending on what it is. Uh, but this particular booth apparently has a breakfast empanada that is open with the park. Oh, nice. So if you are looking for something for breakfast and you don't want to go to Layal or if you don't want to try to go to Sunshine Seasons and go from their um, small breakfast menu, you could try this Encanto booth and try their beet breakfast empanada. Um, and I think it's something that was added afterwards because it's not on here. Might have been, yeah. Um, so this is another one of the wonderful walk of color colorful cuisine items, a chorizo and potato empanada with turmeric aioli and 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 an and netto and ato aioli. Um a spicy a jack a, a hayo <laughs> soup. I don't know. And I would say the same thing, so you're good. With well, where, well, see, this is the reason Chrissy is doing makeup and not reading these because she wants to try to hear me how to pronounce these. An air bowl, chili, spice, chicken, potato, avocado, corn, and creme brache. A gluten and wheat friendly item that Lena can't pronounce half the things in it. And then a passion fruit mousse with dragon fruit. Again, gluten and wheat friendly. So if you're looking for um, Some place that has more of the gluten free items that are on the at Festival of the Arts, definitely check out the Encanto booth. And then for beverages, they have a coconut and passion fruit smoothie, a frozen pina colada, and a passion fruit daiquiri. And at the refreshment port near Canada, they have a ganache poutine with a red wine, braised beef, cheese curds, basil, and burrata. Sam, Sam has talked about trying poutine several different times, but it's either too cold and you don't want to stop walking to have to eat it, or it's too hot and you don't want to stop and eat it. You want to get to the next place with air conditioning. I love poutine. I've gotten poutine at the um, the place you're talking about and in the poutine place in um, Disney, Springs. Disney Springs, and they were all really good. So this is, we were talking about it earlier, the Artist Palette Jumbo Chocolate Chip Cookie. And I think you take the little brush and dip it in water and then spread the color around, which I think is weird. I, to me, that makes your, it's going to make your cookie soggy. Um, and like you said, Christy, this is mainly something for like, I think kids. It would keep them occupied for a little while while you were trying to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, and then again, you have the soft serve waffle cone, Dole Whip Strawberry, Dole Whip Lemon, or Swirl. Beverages, you have a Blood Orange Cosmo, Bo Boyd and Blair Potato Vodka with Blood Orange, Cranberry, and Lime. That sounds really good. Um, and then from Boulevard Brewing Company, Quirk Blueberry Lemon and Lavender Hard Seltzer, which is new to the festival this year. And then Gourmet Landscapes, which is located in the Canada area. They have a Blood Orange Braised beef tartare with mustard vinaigrette, pickled clamshell mushrooms, and golden beets. This is a wonderful walk of colorful cuisine, also plant-based and gluten wheat friendly. And then they have a roasted bone marrow with onion marmalade, pickled mushrooms, and petite lettuce, and a wild mushroom risotto with aged parm, truffle cheese, and a Zinfandel reduction. Are any of those on your list, Christy? Um... Is, which pavilion are you in? Canada. This is um, the Gourmet Landscapes. I'll tell you. Hold on. Let me check. Okay. Oh, come on. It doesn't recognize my face already. Oh, no. While she's looking, I'll go ahead and read the beverages. Whole Hog Brewery Raspberry Charade Double Rattler, a 
root that I can't even pronounce the other three words in it. The Meeker Vineyard Winemakers Handprint Merlot and a frozen rusty nail cocktail. The, Can the Canada Pavilion has refreshment for it. Pop Eats. is tomato soup with grilled cheese and blue. And then no, blue this isn't Pop Eats. This is Gourmet Landscapes. Oh, uh, Gourmet Landscapes. Uh, roasted bone marrow, blood orange, braised beef, tart, frozen, yes. rusty nail. Okay, so yeah, the two of the three are on your list. This The next one is Moderne, Moderne, Moderne which is near Test Track. They have a compressed watermelon taki with pickled watermelon rind, yuzu pearls, watermelon foam, and wasabi. This is new. It is also plant-based. An angry crab. A whole crispy shop so shop. Shop shop. Whole that one is crispy. On this, the angry crab is on your list. Yeah. Um, just because I saw multiple people review it and really like it. It is a whole crispy soft shell crab with green papaya salad, mango sriracha fluid gel, and coconut lime foam with pomegranate and mango crush pearls. That is new to the festival this year. It doesn't hurt that it has mango and pineapple too. I like both. <laughs> <laughs> um, pan seared scallops with vanilla butternut squash puree, brown butter cauliflower puree, and a lime foam. And that is on the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. And then the tropics, a leekoe mousse, guava cake, coconut crumo, compressed pineapple, and mango gel, which is new. Beverages is a watermelon Mary featuring Boyd and Blair potato vodka and a J. Lore Riesling. Oh, we're, we're, we're getting there, y'all. And then Figment's Imagination Station at the Odyssey. So if you don't know which building is the Odyssey building, if you are walking um, by um, Mexico and you see, and like you're going like, not going towards Mexico, but coming out of Mexico, like you're heading across to like Canada, and you see a building on your right, it's that it's that big building over there. They've had like different things in there. Um, this past year they had Santa Goofy meeting in there um after Christmas. That's where Santa met at Christmas. So um they've been using that building for quite a bit. I call it the bathrooms building because they have great bathrooms inside and they always have clean bathrooms outside. Yeah. The other good bathroom area is over there, um, in the where they used to do um the build the building where they have like the convention center building. You know what I'm talking about back there. In, yeah. Yeah. There's bathrooms yep. back there, and it's huge. Yep. Hello, Christine Hickman. Welcome in. We are Hi, talking Steve. about um, festival of the arts. We're going over the the foodie eats menu, and Christina sign us what is on her list for her upcoming trip. So Sometimes. we are cursed. There's a lot on my list, and I can't remember them all. <laughs> Um, food items, a fruit pizza, watermelon, compressed cantaloupe, berries, and berry balsamic. It is plant-based. It is gluten-friendly. The so popped. That yeah. was on my list. And then I watched these different reviews and no one was impressed with it. It was just. Yeah. Of so I took it I, off that's, that's what I've seen. A lot of people say they're like, this is literally a, a watermelon wedge with this stuff on top of it. Yeah. Um. And I'm like, well, that's weird. <laughs> and overpriced. Um, yeah, that's what a lot of people have said. The popped art, it's a sugar cookie with blueberry filling. It's on the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. Pretty much it's a pop tart yeah. without calling it a pop tart. Um, rainbow cake with freeze-dried Skittles. And from what I have heard people saying that the best part of this cake is the Skittles. Yeah, and I, I, that like, is on my list it's it's not um like the 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 layers aren't flavored from this just vanilla cake the only thing that's flavored are the freeze dried skittles on top which i like i find like really disappointing well it's on my list for instagram factor and they said that the <laughs> cake was very moist and delicious they were just surprised that it wasn't multiple flavors yeah um and I mean, I get it. Like, if you had multiple flavors, the flavors may not go well together in one bite. Um, 
but then I think at that point I would have made it into like little mini cakes and like where you had a lemon, an orange, a strawberry, a grape, and a lime that you would get like like mini cupcakes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that would be what you got instead of this layered cake. Yeah. But um again, this is and um, the it's not a new item because it doesn't have new on it. So excuse me, that's this is something that they've apparently had at farts in years past. They just um, revamped it with the Skittles. Right. Um, and we were watching something, and Sam and I did before the shutdown, did the just uh the a backstage tour of uh world showcase, and the chefs were telling us that um they plan the menus for the next festival a year in advance. So right now they are working on 2024 Festival of the Arts menus. So like if you get if so if somebody stops you and says, "Hey, would you mind doing a survey on your experience here today?" and there's something that you really didn't like or you're like, "This this didn't taste the way that um it was represented to." Make sure to note that in your survey because if they that they don't know things unless we as a general public say something. Like if if we're all disappointed that there's not multiple flavors in this cake because it's like it's supposed to be a Skittles cake, this is something that the chefs need to know. Like the chefs at Disney aren't watching this live stream right now. Like we know that. Like that this is not happening. Um, but like if I if I were if Christy were to get a survey at the end of the at the end of her trip. And it's like, hey, we saw that you were at, because it, it's like, we all know that our fit, that our magic bands, they track when we go in, when we leave, all that kind of stuff. We know that. It's just one of those things. Um, it says, hey, we saw that you were at Epcot on this date. Did you eat at any of the booths at Festival of the Arts? And she would click yes. And then like, you would ask her questions. Is there anything you would like to change? Maybe Christy thought the cake was perfect as is. And she would put, hey, I really like the Skittles cake. I really liked how it was. Don't make any changes. But maybe Christine Hickman goes and has a completely different experience. And she's like, I thought that it was going to have all these different flavors uh, because it had Skittles on top. And I was really disappointed. And I would want to see a um, little, I would rather have, what are there, two, five layers? I'd rather have five little mini cupcakes, one of each different flavor, um, instead of, a, um, so I could taste the different flavors instead of one, you know, cake with that's multicolored, but it just is vanilla cake. So there's going to be different opinions. And I truly think that the chefs do take that into consideration. Yeah, I bet they do. Uh, because people won't come back. They won't come back to try the new things if the things that they're eating aren't things that they that they don't like or things they don't like. Okay, continuing on. The Finman Premium Park Popcorn Bucket with Rainbow Popcorn Limit to per person. And again, as we stated at the beginning, these are um, something that you have to do via mobile order. So um, be aware of that. And be aware it is the same popcorn bucket from last year. It's just a different strap. Beverages. Um, there's a grape smoothie with franchise Skittles, bite-sized candy. It's non-alcoholic. And from what I've seen, it comes in a really cute little plastic um, beer can style cup um, with figment, out like little figment wings and stuff on it. I would want it just for the cup, not yeah. going to <laughs> I've heard that it tasted it doesn't taste the best it tastes artificial but it's worth it because the cup's cute right and that's what i have heard too um then three daughters brewing company has a black cherry hard cider a blood orange hard cider and a passion fruit hard cider um and i'm gonna guess that that is the rainbow cider flight i would try that because i liked the three daughters um um, a IPAs that I tried at um, Festival of the Holidays. Um, 81 Brewing Company Green with NB Blonde Ale, a Blue Butterfly Lager from Urban Artifacts, the Gadget, Raspberry and Blackberry Midwest Fruit Tart, and a Rainbow Beer Flight. So, um, there you go. Then at Connections Cafe, and Connections Cafe is Starbucks, for those of you who didn't know. Um, but you cannot... Redeem stars there. You could earn them, but you cannot mobile order um, through the Starbucks app. I think you can mobile order um, through the Disney app, though. Am I? 
I, well, I'm not really, positive about that. I do know you I'm cannot order positive. mobile order through the Starbucks app, though. Right. Um. So I may be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. Um. But like, if you if you mobile order, if you are able to mobile order through the Walt Disney World app, you can't like use your Starbucks card to pay for it. So. Uh, if you want to be able to purchase something in connections with your Starbucks card, unfortunately, you will have to stand and wait in line. They have a Thickmint Liege waffle, and I have heard that it's not the best. Um, and then they have a Dusk Till Dawn, three olives, blueberry vodka, lemonade, and orange juice served and topped with cotton candy. And I think that looks, to me, it looks like a vanilla float that you've topped with blue raspberry syrup and cotton candy. Okay, Christy, tell me if I'm wrong. This looks like something we would have been served at a roller skating rink in the 90s. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, when I saw the pictures of that, I went, okay, are we back? I mean, I like, Marathon Weekend was the 90s, uh, you know, so, like, I'm going, are we going back to the 90s? Because that is something that would have been served at a bowling alley or a bowling alley or a roller skating rink it would have been vanilla soft serve and they would have put pumped that blue raspberry syrup on top and plopped this ball like this hard ball of um, cotton candy on top of it and we would have eaten it and we would have paid like 10 bucks for it <laughs> no take that back our parents would have paid 10 bucks for it and been mad because yeah. we didn't eat it <laughs> Okay, so continuing on, Le Art de la Cuisine Francesa, which is in France. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty close on that, and I'm feeling good about it, so we're going to roll with it. Cream de brie in petite pain, warm creamy brie in a house-made bread bowl. That's this one's top, and I'm sorry, that looks absolutely phenomenal. And Christy, that best be on your list. <laughs> the bread bowl is on my list. <laughs> good, because if it wasn't, it was going to be. <laughs> All four of those are on my list. Okay. Croissant de la Truffle Noir de Hiver, a black black winter truffle croissant. Um, this next one is a plant. I'm not even going for the name. A plant based Napoleon with beets, cashew herb filling, pepper pine nut sauce, and a balsamic vinegar. I'm assuming it's this one over here on the bottom left. Yeah. And then a molten chocolate and hazelnut cake with pure or original origin Valhorna chocolates and passion fruit mix. Mango sauce, excuse me. And then beverages. Of course, we had the frozen French martini, grape juice vodka, vodka, chambord liqueur, pineapple orange, and grape juices with lemon lime foam. I don't think, I think the one of the longest lines at any food festival at Epcot is the France Pavilion simply for the frozen drinks in France. Mm -hmm. I have never had, I have never had one because the lines are just ridiculously long. Um, and I'm like, I'm not waiting in line that long to get a drink. <laughs> I've had um, one. It, I had one at the um, uh, Food and Wine Festival. Uh, it was like an orangey one, I believe. I remember I found the breakfast. Okay. So the next one is a French Rosé sparkling wine. And then there's a Chardonnay and a Citrus Vodka Spritz. Then we move on to the Mexico Pavilion. They have a carne asada, chipotle marinated beef sirloin, sweet potato pier, and crispy fried onions. I'm going to go ahead and tell you everything on the Mexico Pavilion is on my list because it's my favorite food pavilion. Okay. They have the guachero chile and corn masa hereche with pinto beans, oyster, mushrooms, napoles, queso fresco, and peat tendricles. And now I'm going to, I have this little image of this like um, octopus that's green and it looks like a pea, like a pea with like little arms like crawling over Christy's boot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, and, um, I'm smiling so my favorite drink booth. Pavilion. Flan de coco, coconut flan, guava sauce, and whipped <clears throat> cream. It is gluten and wheat friendly. Then they've got beers, they've got margaritas, and you know, it's Mexico. It's, the, it's got the most the popular booth is the margarita booth. Then 
we move over to Japan. They have a rainbow kachu sandu pork cutlet sandwich with tangy tonzaku sauce and cabbage and a rainbow sweetbread. Then they have a sushi donut, a donut-shaped sushi featuring salmon, tuna, shrimp, cucumber, and sesame seed over a decorated plate of wasabi, aioli, sriracha, aioli, and eel sauce. And then they have an ichigu jikifu, mixed berry mochi, sweet azaku bean paste, and mascarpone. I feel like I pronounced those pretty well, but that may just be me. Um, beverages doing better than I would. So they have a sushi, sushi, sushi water cooler lager, a masu sake, and a traditional personalized wooden cup, a purple yatsu sake lemonade, a sake cocktail infused with butterfly pea flower and yuzu lemonade. <laughs> My my little floor heater has a little button that like keeps it activated, and if the button isn't like activated, it won't be turned on. And so I have this because our carpet is so plush, it doesn't like activate the little button. So I have it on this like little wooden block under my desk, and it fell off the block. I had to put it back on there. Oh, don't fall! I didn't fall. I know. The, uh, the, the, the little heater fell and my my legs started getting cold. Okay. I said, oh no, don't fall. Ah! Okay, so continuing on, we're almost to the end, I think. Yeah, we've got two more left on this one. Maybe three. Um, the Painted Panda, which is in China. They have a General Tao's Chicken Sumai and a Char Su Pork Bun. And then for beverages, they have a panda bubble milk tea with black tea, milk, chocolate, and tapioca bubble pearls. I have never tried them because I thought they were fish eggs. So the tapioca bubble pearls, we had something like that at um, Fest B. I can't remember if it was the Christmas one or the uh, food and wine, but um, they're very chewy. I mean, they're good. I've had tapioca bubble pearls before. They're very chewy though, so if you don't if you don't want to sit there and make your mouth raw by chewing a lot, I wouldn't get it. But yeah, I always thought they were um, fish eggs at the bottom of people's drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I like boba pearls, but the tapioca ones aren't the best to have in drinks. And then they have a lucky food pale ale. Hello, walking with the woods. Um, Silk, Silk Road Hard Lemonade with Smirnoff Vodka, Lavender Coconut Syrup, and Lemonade. Um, He's walking, says, loving your reels on oh, Instagram. And the Sea Butterfly. Butterfly Pea Flower Infused Cocktail with Smirnoff Vodka, Light Rum, Lychee Syrup, and Magic Boba Pearls. Then we come to Italy, which I think, like, Sam... Sam is Italian and won't even eat in the Italy Pavilion, so I think that says a lot about the food. But uh, they have a mozzarella fritta, a flash fried breaded fresh mozzarella with an artist palette of condiments. And it's not even the eight Italy different Italy condiments. Italy isn't the best. I've eaten it's, in a lot. It's four condiments, and you get two little palette, artist palette openings of the same sauce. So you're literally getting four sauces. Then you, there's some ravioli, a wild mushroom stuffed pasta with truffle butter and truffle pearls, and a chocolate pudding with colorful, colorful chocolate decor. Oh, thank you. And it says, congrats on the run, Lean, run Disney Lena. You're doing amazing. Thank you very much. They have a Pilsner, a Chihanti Prosecco, an Italian sangria, red or white, Italian margarita with tequila and limoncello, and then Amaretto Bellini, Disarono, original liqueur, white peach puree, and Prosecco. And the last thing is a funnel cake. It's a mocha funnel cake, mini funnel cake with ca cappuccino ice cream topped with chocolate whipped cream and M&M candies. And it doesn't say where that's located. Um, I'm wondering... Um, if that's just locate, you can find that at multiple locations. Um, then there's Joffrey's Tea, Coffee and Tea has different um, drinks at different locations all around. 
uh, Epcot. Okay, so do you get the Joffrey's coffee in the parks? Um, I've gotten it a couple times. The my favorite, um, I got is actually when I got um at after I finished the five k. There's because they have a Joffrey's portable truck in the parking lot. Um, with a limited menu, and I got one of their ESPN Wild World Wide World of Sports exclusives. It was called the Game Changer, and it's cold brew with a shot of espresso, Irish cream, and something else. And it was amazing. I would literally take the best two Wide World of Sports and ju just for that. So I've had Joffrey's a couple of times, and each time I've never really cared for it. Um, I think it depends on what you get. Um, also, I was really tired and needed coffee, so that could have been part of it. <laughs> I was exhausted. Coffee. I was exhausted. I had been awake since. I was really proud of myself. Like in 2022, I woke up at like 11:30 the night before the 5K and could not go back to sleep. So I had been awake for several hours, <laughs> um, and this year I slept till like one o'clock. So I slept for like two, an hour and a half longer than I did the year before. I Man, I think we talked about this where I said that I may just, I don't know if it was you or my mom, um, but I just may not go to sleep the night before because we are literally out and about running around till like one o'clock in the morning. And if, and you said that it's best to, you know, get to the bus stop around two or two 30. And I'm like, hmm. I wouldn't, I would definitely make sure that, um, you get a good, nice rest the night before, because it's not like other 5Ks where, you know, you go right to the starting line. You literally walk a 5K before you get to the, before you get to your corral. Because they will drop, they will drop you off at the bus stops in Epcot and then you have to wait for security to open. So you're in this long line waiting for security to open. Then you have to go to security just like you would to get into the park. And if your bag your if it goes off, you have to go do through bag check. Um, and then you have to wander your way through and out um, into the area. And then you still have this long walk through the parking lots. And then they have um, they have they typically have four photo ops. Our, the morning of the fight for the marathon 5k they had mickey minnie donald and daisy and we waited like an hour for that for those characters and then we went then we still had to walk to our gate and then you're in this um corral area then you wait there for to get to for them to get to your gate your corral then you have to walk and wait for your way from your corral so we didn't actually step off until like right or almost at 5 30 and we were there at three it sounds like kind of like the um the turkey run in nashville how busy but, it is yeah. i would i would highly recommend making sure that you get you eat well the night before good protein um sam and i each had we actually ended up eating a kid's cheeseburger meal um the night before and then and be, and then going to bed and then um though there will be um freestanding sandwich boards that tell you like where race transportation is and that kind of thing but yeah you don't you don't want to try to be awake for uh, you you definitely want to get some rest the night before if I don't, I'll just go to sleep after I get back because it's our universal day and I don't really care make, if I'm late to universal. Make sure and take your medal with you over to universal. The, the, we, did, we did that um, the next day and when we and we took our medal around and wore it around the um, universal and got pictures with the characters over there as well. It was fun. And we got, and like, there were lots of people were like, congrats and you know that kind of thing so it was fun and hey remind me christy to um take a picture of my photo 
QR code because so this was really so I went in to ask about our photos from our Grinchmas breakfast and the guy was like he said he was really nice and he reactivated our one year photo pass for free. Nice. Yeah. So we ended up with another full year of my, my universal photos. So remind me then to take a picture of our QR code and send it to you so that they can, uh, you can get your pictures. Sweet. They'll come to you, right? Yeah. And I'll just send them to you like I did last time. Okay, cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So that was all of the ones on the Disney Eats Foodie Guide. Hello, Nathan. Welcome in. Welcome in. So I have another... I don't see Nathan's comment. Oh, there it is. It just popped in. I saw it first on live chat. Because uh, I have live chat open. Okay, I have another one for you to share. Okay, okay so this was posted just this past Wednesday. And these are new additions. Again, this is all from the Disney Parks blog. Coming to the Flower and Garden Festival, which starts March 1st. And it, it goes a little longer this year. It actually goes till. July 5th this year. Last year, the last day was the 3rd. And, like, it was, like, literally all the booths were down on the 4th of July. Because <laughs> we went the 3rd and we went the 4th. And Sam and I were like, holy cow. They literally had all of the booths out of Epcot overnight. That was quick. But the, this year, um, Flying Garden goes till the 5th. So the article reads, there is nothing lovelier than springtime at Walt Disney World. The days get longer, weather warms up, and colorful flowers bloom across the landscape. One of the best places to experience spring is at the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. Beginning March 1st, continuing through July 5th, this stunning festival features alluring gardens, whimsical topiaries, lively entertainment, beautiful merchandise, and delightfully fresh cuisine. The topiaries are really neat. They are, they, these are stuff that they start working on right after Flower and Garden like last year, they took in the different pieces, refreshed the flower work on them, um, and started getting them ready for this year, which I think is just absolutely amazing. Um, for the first time, topiaries of Mirabelle, Anito, Isabella, and Louisa from Encanto will be at the festival. They will be near the main entrance, so make sure to um, mark that down as a photo if you want those. Even if you don't want a photo in front of them, but you just want pictures of all the topiaries, you'll want to make sure to check that out. There will be a new Princess Tiana topiary in the American Adventure. My guess is to kind of uh, start reminding people that Tiana's Bayou Adventure um, is coming to Magic Kingdom. Probably. They will have returning favorites such as Snow White and the Seven Doors, Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, Captain Hook, and TikTok Croc, Figment, Anna and Elsa, and more. The popular Garden Rocks concert series is back, and that will more information will be later on that. Um, the Garden Rocks is pretty much like um, the Eat to the Beat um, or Candlelight Processional, where if you want, if there's a performance that you really want to see, make sure and grab that dining reservation to be guaranteed seating. And as soon as they release, um, start releasing who is performing, Christy and I will um, talk about that. Or if Christy's out wandering Epcot or something, I will talk about it solo. Well, I hope they uh, announce it before I go. That way I can have an idea of who's performing the day I'm there. We're not, we're not going to tell Christy who's performing. Um, get your taste buds ready room for a treat. More than 15 outdoor kitchens will offer specialty menus of scrumptious cuisine and beverages. Um, the, the, the article writer says, one of my favorites is the Citrus Blossom, will move, which will move to a new location at the Odyssey. With fresh new menu items, you'll want to sample all of the mouth-watering delights. You can comm commemorate your visit with official 70s-inspired Orange Bird merchandise, including apparel, headwear, drinkware, and more. So we've gone from 90s to 70s. And it, as they do. As they do. Spike's Pollen Nation Exploration will have people abuzz. If you don't know, Spike's Pollen Nation is 
um, a purchase um, map hunt that you can purchase. Put the stickers where different um, Spike the Bee is located in different like poses or whatever in each of the countries. You can turn it in and get a prize. Um, the springtime scavenger hunt is fun for all. Follow Spike the Bee on his pollination trail while he will be busy collecting nectar and pollinating gardens at Epcot. Once you find him in each garden on your map, add the sticker of the plant he is visiting. And a little secret, you don't actually have to finish it to get your prize. No, you don't. So, like, if the, if it's something that you start and, like, your kids get tired of it, you can go up and just tell them, we're not going to be finishing this, we're leaving, or whatnot, and they will go ahead and let you pick your prize. On the Bridge to World Showcase, you can enjoy the sights and scents of spring with blossoms of fragrance presented by Scentsy. Surrounded by vibrant butterfly topiaries, guests will be invited to follow their noses to scent six scent stations to form lasting memories with the help of unforgettable aromas. And you can buy those fragrances on Scentsy. Yeah, I'm not a Scentsy rep. I just know that you can. And then um, more details coming. And uh, to experience Fall and Garden, you must have both a valid admission and a park reservation. So that is what we know so far about Fall and Garden. My guess is that sometime middle of February, we will have um, menus. Yeah, probably. Hopefully before I leave. I would think before you leave, um, there will be some menus. Hopefully, at least. So, one of my favorite looks that I've done is that blue cracked face look. So, I decided to do it in pink and red for Valentine's Day. Okay. And extend it down to here. So, where you look like you had no clothes on again. Yep. Yeah. Christy, Christy, Christy. Also, guess what I did? You remember how I kept on like getting irritated? Well, it wasn't irritated. It was, well, maybe it was irritated. I kept on getting comments like "cringe," "get your mom off YouTube," etc. I went mm -hmm. in and blocked another 150 words. That's funny. So. I think it was on New Year's Eve. I did that TikTok trend for like, it's supposed to be like each month or whatever. Yeah. And so I went through, found, and I did, I took downloaded photos, figured out how much weight I lost. I, and I did a video and it's got like 300 views on TikTok. So I uploaded it to YouTube. And it's got over 50,000 views. Nice. Like, yeah. I have went through and deleted so many comments on it. I There was comments like, wow, you didn't lose any weight. You should really get your money back. Or, wow, um, you're still just so fat. Why are you even still trying? You like, should block the word fat. I did. I did. I did. I blocked the word fat. I blocked a couple other words. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I need to add that one. But the funny... Add it as cringe, cringy, and spell it multiple different ways. And then also add it at cringe with dots in between, kind of like friends, because that's what they do. They get creative. Yeah, I need to. I'll probably have you um, copy and paste what you did and send it to me so I can just put it in there. Sure. Um, But it's got, like, over... Let um, me... Got me pull up my dashboard because I want to know, I want to say correctly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Go to content. Here. Analytics. Okay. So it has 51.3 thousand views on YouTube. That's amazing. Um, it added 108 subscribers to my channel. That's awesome. Which I thought was really funny. Yeah. Um, 
shorts will get your subscriber count up there pretty quickly. So the funnier part that made me laugh is that it has, it'll tell me, I know I can look at it and it'll tell me on, um, studios what it is but it has like one thou one thousand and something likes but like 125 dislikes and i'm like do you it it made me laugh every time i started to get a dislike on it because i'm like thank you for the engagement thank you for pushing it out there more yeah Ooh, I should check the status of um, the Splash Mountain one. Oh, yeah, I'll look. Ten. So it's just got ten. But the one I posted just before that has 2.5. Oh, wrong one. I thought you were looking at, like, the wait times. Sorry. So yeah. for those of you who didn't know, today is Splash Mountain's last day before it goes under refurbishment to become the Tiano's Bayou. And so we have been watching. It's back up to a 200-minute wait. Pirates is still down, but they have Haunted Mansion back up. Well, let's get Haunted Mansion's back up. Pirates has been down literally all day. I got a ton of pictures that I took of Splash on our first our first trip. And so I think I'll go in and like send like download those and use the I will remember you song. <laughs> yeah. Um and see what and see I, it won't get very much traction, I'm sure, but you might. The whole reason I posted mine to see, is to see what it would do. It hadn't though. I know a lot of people are live from Disney right now. Standing in a two hour, three, three hour line to ride mm -hmm. a ride that is going to make them freeze to death. Mm hmm. I guess like the local news channels are there covering it. That's funny. I was, um, I've ridden it, but only like twice. I've not ridden it that much. I've worn it a couple times, but not and like like sam said like we're um we like splash mountain but it's nothing that we have this like deep-seated connection to yeah definitely same So yesterday, Sam and I worked all day at our at Hillsboro's basketball tournament. Um, we got there. It said, be there by 10 o'clock. So we were there at like 945, and the doors were all locked. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, so about five minutes later, they were still locked. So I texted the person in charge, like, oh, we'll have someone right over there right away. So we got in, and we um, we're getting our stuff set, you know, situation and whatnot. And the athletic director comes over and goes, what are you guys doing here so early? And I kind of looked at him funny and I went, um, because our text from Aaron said to be here by 10. And he's like, what? So, um, I showed him the text. He's like, I need to talk to her because our first game isn't until 1130. You didn't really need to be here until like 1030, 1045. So I'm like, well, it's no big deal. And, you know, we're whether we sit here or sit at home, it doesn't really matter, you know. Yeah. But And then it was probably about, like, 1 o'clock or so. He come, like he came over to check on us, make sure we didn't need anything or not. Um, then he came and goes, you guys know about the schedule change, right? And I looked at him and I went, 
no, no one said anything to me about a schedule change. He's like, oh, one of the teams isn't coming today because of the projected weather. Well, we've been in like a winter weather advisory for like two days. And I mean, all day yesterday it snowed, but it was like it, nothing stuck because it was still like 36 degrees. But it was like the big, huge, fluffy like snowflakes. And so, um, all of the champ, like the championship games, um, got pushed up by like an hour and a half. And so we were supposed to be done at eight. We were done at like six, six thirty, yeah, six thirty ish, somewhere in there. So well, did I hear him say "ish" in the background? Yeah. <laughs> so, um. But yeah, so we did that, and but Sam got almost all of his homework done yesterday. The only thing is left to, left to do today is um, his test for the week. You know what song stuck in my head now, thanks to you? This is a song that never... No, I will remember you. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so we're going to do something fun on our july trip what are you doing we're gonna meet up with mickey sightings on the fourth of july and hang out with them oh nice we're gonna do garden girl for lunch and then we're going to all conquer the kitchen sink at beaches and cream we're doing that we're conquering the kitchen sink at beaches and cream our first day there um, with something that Sam and I, like, if you look, it's like $36, which isn't, like, if you figure, that's not horrible. You know, even, but, you know, cost-wise for two people. But um, that's just a lot of ice cream. Yeah. And we're eating lunch there, too, so we're going to be stuffed. We ate lunch there the day after they had that big kitchen fire. Oh, wow. Um, oh, and it was inside. You were eating outside then, right? It was inside. Oh, really? Yeah, the, they offered a cold, it was cold sandwiches and ice cream. They did, couldn't offer anything on the fryer or grill. Oh. But yeah, they still had it open the next day. Uh, what, when you came up, they um, go, hey, you know that we have a different menu because of um, it, the incident yesterday. Do you want to keep your reservation? Do you want to cancel it with no penalty? Which I thought was really nice for them to do to cancel the penalty. Yeah. So. I guess their altered menu probably wasn't very expensive either. Uh, no, it wasn't. All about the shading. I feel like I need to darken that up a little bit. This is a pretty simple look for you. Huh? It's a pretty simple look for you. Typically, yours are pretty mo a lot more. In I depth. know, I know, but I want to you remember like the you you remember the silver and blue one I did, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's my favorite look, so I wanted to do another one like it. Makes sense. And what other? And I finally was like, you know what? I could probably do a pink and red and make it Valentine themed. The difficulty of this look is the shading. Making it look smooth as possible. And then this side I'll have eyeshadow on. I'll do that last. Same colors, just, you know, you know how I do. I know. You have been doing that for one hour and 15 minutes now. Mm -hmm. 
it'll probably be closer to two hours because I got all this to do. So by about one o'clock. Which is why I ate lunch at 10.30. <laughs> You're like, it's just 10.30. I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm like, I'm hungry. And if I don't do it now, it won't get done until after one. I just got that on my ear. And I'll do my white wig over this to give it a little more Valentine shading colors. What else we got going on in the Disney world? I think right now the big thing is um, Splash. Oh, I, uh, I do know that Tron opens on the 4th of April and they've done, they're have they doing cast member previews uh, February 15th through March something. Hmm, that's interesting. I am curious. This is pure speculation on my part. I wonder if um, they will re-theme Pecos Spills into Tiana's Place. That would be a good idea. Um, It would... It's right there, right next to Splash Mountain, which is going to be Tiana's Bayou. I think it would help, like, tie the theming in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because everyone is like, okay, how does this fit into the theme of Frontierland. It doesn't. Yeah. But then, again, you can see Tron from all over the park. Oh, I don't know. It's just got to stick my finger up in there. I, I have a group that's sailing out on a cruise in March. And one of the ladies is like, I just can't. I bought these little bottles at Dollar Tree, and I'm going to put sand in them and bring them home. I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> My customs will eat you alive. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, you can't. Because that, you can't take sand um, from another country and bring it into the U.S. anymore. It makes sense, though, in case it contains bacteria that our country doesn't have. That's pretty much it. I brought home um, a bath ball that I purchased there. And because of the material, they they almost took it from me. So, yeah, be very careful. Yeah. So Sam and I have talked um, back and forth on like would we go on another cruise and you know that kind of thing. Uh, we, we like the cruise but um, we really enjoyed like the we enjoy our time at the theme parks and stuff a little bit more. Yeah. Um, it also makes my, my, if my dad can't get in touch with me, it makes him very nervous. So not that he calls us every day on vacation, but if he needed to get in touch with us and we were like at sea where we didn't have like ability to get a phone call, it would make him very nervous. So. Yeah, I get that. But like, what resort did you stay at at Universal, Christy, on your last trip? Dockside. Have you stayed at Cabana Bay? 
No, but I saw all your stuff from it. It looks amazing. It is like the food court is humongous. And we didn't we didn't get a resort tour or anything like that. We were we were too busy having fun. <laughs> um there's a list of and like I I go into vacation with all these thumbnails made of what I'm going to record and what I'm going to do and yeah that usually changes. <laughs> Um, but this time, um, kind of like last year when we went over the summer, Sam is going to have, oh, excuse me, um, classwork that he will need to work on in the afternoons and stuff. So we'll be at the resort and that gives me an opportunity to get a resort, like a resort tour done. You know, of the lobby and, the, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. There's more stuff that I think they'll end up getting filmed over the summer than I think will on, like, Christmas trips. There's just more going on during Christmas trips. Yeah. I, I'm trying to relax on our Christmas trips. One of the things that I need to do is I need to get my photos downloaded and I, I've got my photos from like my Disney experience downloaded, so I don't have to worry about that, but I need to get the photos downloaded from Sam's phone to my computer so that I can work on um, getting like the little synopsis is talked about of our days and then um, the photo montage is done so that we I can start getting those video that then those photos uploaded to Facebook and get them off of my phone so I'm so I get stuff accomplished from vacation but you know how that goes mm -hmm. I still have a ton of makeup videos sitting on these um cards that I definitely need to edit and get off my cards so I can use them while I'm down there. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, ooh. Ooh, this is hard to see. Why'd I put a design way back there? I can't even see now. I can't see. But yeah, so we we have a trip vacation photo or trip vacation announcement video coming out, you know, in the next month or so. For the summer. Mm hmm oh. our, our 101 uh, days is actually starts while I'm on spring break. So that's fun. I can actually plan something for and schedule it in advance. Yep. Just we can well we can do something like because I think let me look at Oh I got to the office the other day and I pulled up I was waiting on my computer to boot up at the office. Pulled up mm -hmm. my YouTube and realized you had just like not even three minutes before finished going live. Oh yeah, on uh, um, Friday, I was I was ready to go. I'm like I might, I'll see if I can go live and oh no, I was I then I felt like I was rushed trying to get finished up from stuff for work. So I don't know if I'll do that again. Huh. Um. But yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to end up, 
we really, really liked Cabana Bay. Um, for being a value resort, um, it felt like a deluxe. Yeah, compared to Disney's. Yeah. Um, Cabana Bay has a bowling alley in it, but it, the bowling alley is strictly for those staying at Cabana Bay. Um, it used to be that anyone can make a reservation, but post-COVID, it has only been for those who are staying at Cabana Bay. I noticed, like, when I stayed at Dockside, it's, like, a value plus. So, it's supposed to be lower than a value at Disney. I thought it was better than a value at Disney. The uh, Dockside and Surfside? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would... Comp- I would... See, though, at Universal, those are considered a value. Cabana Bay and Aventura are actually called value plus um, when you go through the training on partner community. Uh, they have a, a moderate resort, which is Sapphire Falls. And then their premier resorts, which are like a deluxe, are Portofino Bay, Hard Rock, and Royal Pacific. And those three resorts, um, you actually get... Um, express pass with your resort so if you are looking at paying for express pass for your trip it really does make sense to price the premier resorts um sometimes it'll actually end up being cheaper than if you were to try to pay for your resort and for the express pass but yes our dalmatian day is actually on wednesday march 15th Oh, I need a drink. And we are 159 days till vacation. <sighs> Nothing better than ice cold water. Am I right or am I right? You're right. Um. But yeah, and then I saw somebody on TikTok, I guess the confectionery at Magic Kingdom, you can make your own popcorn mix. Like you can put your own add-ins and all that kind of stuff in it. Um, so I thought that was really cool um, and something that I definitely want to do. But I think what our plan is, is that we are going to end up paying for tickets to Disney separate and we're going to stay at Universal the whole time. That's what I did when I was last there. Well, uh, two nights I spent on Disney property, but it was staying with a friend that already had reservations there. Right. At the Swan. Yeah. Um, I think we priced it out and we will end up saving like four or five hundred dollars doing it that way as opposed to doing like a split stay or something yeah it's much cheaper to stay on universal property um even with the um paying for parking at the parks it still ends up being cheaper i actually was able to not have to pay for parking at the parks when i went because me and my friend have the same first name and before they requested your ID, I would use her pass to get my get discounts and get on to the property to not have to pay to park. Now they ask for your ID. Unfortunately. Can't use her pass anymore. Oh, did you see that they have, they're not going to charge, um, parking at the resorts anymore. Yeah. I did see that. They'll probably jack the price up though. Well, what'll end up happening is that the price, um, per night will probably go up about 15 to $20. So you're still going to end up paying it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're just really not it's not something that will be something that you pay when you get there you've already paid for it yeah um because see at at universal you do pay per night and it roughly comes out to be about 20 dollars per night Mm -hmm. Uh, 
but you pay it all up front, which I liked. Yes. At Disney, they charge it every night. Yep. So um, every couple of nights, we would go pay off the parking fees because we didn't want it to charge our card on file. We had a gift card. So every couple, three, four nights, we would go pay it off and then um, be done with it. And then the last night, I'm like, hey, can we just, because it was the same manager at All Star Music over Christmas as it was when we were there in July, and he remembered us. So I'm like, hey, can we just go ahead and put the amount for uh, parking on the card, um, I like as a credit on our account so I don't have to worry about it anymore? He's like, yeah, sure, no problem. So... He did that for us, but um, it, I didn't like that, like, because, you know, I wanted, I wanted, I like things being paid up front and in advance um, so that it's something that I don't have to worry about. I can, I, I know how much money I have. I know how much of this I have. I know how much of that I have. Um. I know some people, they're like, oh, well, it's no big deal. We just, we, we just budget differently. And, but I don't like, if you book a room only with Disney, you can call it in and pay it off, but you can't do that with Universal. You have to pay the uh, balance when you get there. There's no way to pay it in advance. And so that, I don't like Unless that. you pay it all in advance at the same time. But their website does not allow you to do that. It doesn't? I it did. No. Mm -mm. I thought when you go to book it, you can either pay all in full or just the one night stay. Uh, -uh. the then they've modified it because you can. It, the only thing it will allow you to do is pay one night advance. Mm. Um, I wonder why they do that. I don't know. Um, it is. It could be something with the Lowe's hotels because remember, Universal doesn't own those hotels. Lowe's Lowe's hotels owns them. Yeah, they are a third party contract. So, uh, for our July trip, we're actually putting a one-day park ticket on a package so that we can pay it off. And I'm like, oh, that, that's $300. I was like, telling Sam, that's $300 that we're not getting back for a ticket. We have annual passes. The same was, look at it as if you paid for travel insurance. By putting a one-day ticket on there, you're able to pay it off. Like, make you know, you don't have to worry about um, paying it when we get there. We can pay it off, and we can add other things to the package to get commission on. Because, like, we, um, you can add the miniature, the putt putt golf that's there in City Walk. You can add the three broomsticks breakfast voucher. You can add. Um, other stuff onto it and I'm like okay you know that makes sense because we like we like to you know budget and stuff so did I tell you that we finally heard from Delta and their decision on our flights well yeah yeah you said you got a full refund because it was their fault yes Yes, we will be getting a full refund. They said it could take a couple months, but we would be getting a refund. So I was very excited about that. I had to remember, I think we had that discussion last time we were live. So, Which seems like forever ago. But it wasn't. It was only like a week. I know. Oh, I'm not going to be done by one. I'm looking at it. I'm not going to be done by one. You're not going. You've got. You don't have a half an. You don't. You have less than a half an hour's worth to do to go. And I still have to do this eye right here. Well, I will probably have to pop off at one because mm -hmm. my voice is going to be going. At least I'm having more conversation with you this time than it was last time. Last time. Oh, right. It was. 
was literally all me talking. It was. Um, I'm, I'm, and I think I'm going into our summer trip with a little less expectations out of myself than I was, um, our trip in December, because like I had really like weird expectations out of myself. I had like 70 or 80 thumbnails pre-made. Like I'm going to do a review on this and I'm going to do a review on that and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm like, I'm looking at like, even looking at it right now, I'm going, I'm an idiot. Did you get any, how many did you get? How, how many, what did I, what do you mean? You had 70 thumbnails. How many did you end up actually using? Filming? Oh, not even half. Like, I ha I'm going through and deleting stuff right now. Um, the only, like, I had, like, intentions of doing reviews on um, every single time we ate. And I'm like, wow, Lena, you are really overthinking this. And some of the places we didn't even end up eating. Uh, I bet that's going to happen to us. We have reservations, but I bet we end up canceling some of them. Because, like, I have... Um, We make dining reservations and then we cancel them. <laughs> like, I, I think I've narrowed it down right now. I don't think we ever did that. I think I've just deleted it down to 22 thumbnails. That's still a good bit that you got. Yeah. So, and, but like I said, I have to go, we'll have to, Sam and I'll have to sit down and record the videos and then I'll have to put in the, the photos at the end. But I mean, like I said, I, I really enjoyed not filming and just, you know, taking pictures and being able to relax. But over the summer, I will definitely be behind the camera a little bit more. Um, and it's very different at Universal than at Disney. Because at Universal, you literally have to leave your um, your bags and stuff in lockers for a majority of the rides. Yeah. Um, you it, Well, and Disney is really cracking down on videoing yeah. stuff on the rides as well. Yeah, you can't do it on on uh, Space Mountain anymore. And Big Thunder. Oh, I didn't know that they changed it for Big Thunder. I wonder why they did Big Thunder. Um, because sometimes when it does that really steep incline, people are losing stuff off of the trains. Mm. And I know a lot of people are complaining about um, people filming on like the dark rides because like you can see you can see their like lights and stuff on if they would cover the back of the screen you couldn't i know um but pe people complain about it and some 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 youtubers don't but um some people some of them do they will if they live stream they will they will talk through the whole ride and so people, instead of being able to listen to the ride or enjoy the, the experience, people are talking. Um, you're interacting with the people on their stream. And so saying, hey, we're going to ride this ride. And I will, We there will be no talking during this ride. Um, I will catch up with this chat um, after the ride is over. I've noticed most do that. There are some that don't. So... Um, I, I think Disney's just getting tired of the complaints. And I, I, I think that go, in the future, we will see more and more of that Probably. Um, ha happening. And I, I know one of the theme parks overseas has really cracked down on it. Um, you can't even live stream in their parks. Nope. 
So I don't think uh, they'll cut that out though. To be frank. But on the other hand, I, I don't know because they are profiting. Um, I think that we might see it because they are profiting off of Disney. So, uh, well, I think we'll just, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, but they have media events here. They invite them out. So Right. But I think there's a difference between like a media event and people um be you know getting huge amounts of money off of live streams no that's just a personal opinion though but no as uh, sam and i have talked about um maybe starting to do um movie nights on like not particularly like saturday friday nights because friday nights still have a lot going on for like school uh basketball or football games or whatnot but Saturday nights are pretty, pretty low key and we're typically at home. So we've talked about doing movie nights um, and coming up with like a fun dinner or something. Like it doesn't always have to be like a themed dinner, but being able to do something fun and do a movie night. Are you required to go to games and stuff with your school? You um, not necessarily. Um, we can sign up at the beginning of the year to get a pass for the full year for all, um, non tournament games. Um, and what you, if you want a single pass, like if it was just me, um, I could get one and, and they would just hand me one. But if I want a family pass, um, you have to work three game, three different games during the course of the school year. So, so and you get the family pass, so you're required to work at least three. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but the kicker is, is that the individual passes are not valid at our home tournaments. They will honor the family pass. Hmm. So it's kind of like, yes, you can get a single pass and not do any work. But if you want to go to a tournament, then you're going to have to pay. I take it most people do the family pass, and that way they have volunteers to work the events. Yes. Good way to do and, it. And um, we uh, we typically do football games in the past, but I think um, this next school year we're going to do um, basketball. Kind of mix it up a bit. Mix it up a little bit. Um, my cousin's son plays for um, – a school that we play a lot. And so we typically don't get to see him play because we're typically working gate the night that, you know, we, uh, we play them. So, and he's going to be a junior next year. So he only has a couple more years left um, playing high school. So we want to make sure and be able to see, see him and support him and be able to see, you know, that's like, as you get older, like, the only time you see family is at sporting events, <laughs> even though we look like an hour apart. She, she works, she's a fifth grade teacher. I work at this, like, her husband works security for the airport. Like, there's, there's so much that goes on in your life when you get to be an adult. Like, oh, like, you could actually have a conversation, you know, at a, at a sporting event. Like, in between, like, cheering or, like, going, oh, or, you know, whatever. So, yeah. we're, I think this next year... Um, we're going. We're going to offer to work um, our our home tournament for um, three different days of the home tournament. One, the school has Wi-Fi, so Sam can take his computer with us. He can get a little bit of homework done, and then be able to. I can still work gate, and if it starts getting really busy, he can pause his homework, come over and help me, and then go back. Um, yesterday, like I said, when we were at the Hillsborough tournament, Sam did homework all day. He just, you know, in between, um, people and whatnot, he got everything except for his test done. So, um, it just works out and football season can get really cold. Fifteen minutes till one. Mm -hmm. I will go over one, but probably not as much as I thought. Because I just well, got these two little sections left, and then this eye. 
Okay. Well, we'll see where you're at when it comes around one o'clock. Okay. Um, we're we're still kind of trying to figure out um what like when we're what we're doing like as far as leaving for vacation. We've got like two or two or three different ways that, that it could work at this point. And it all really depends on what's going on for Sam because it doesn't affect me any because I will be on summer vacation. Oh yeah, um, so you're you're talking about date wise. Well, time of day. Mm. We will leave on I think it's the thirtieth. Yeah. We will leave on the thirtieth of June, but there's multiple ways that it could work. Sam could work late Monday through Thursday and be off at lunch, which for him is 11 on Friday. And we can be out the door by 12 or a little before. Um, because if y'all remember last July's vacation, we had, we were packed like two weeks before the car was packed and ready to go. Like two weeks before we left, <laughs> uh, because like, hey, we could we well, need to see how the luggage is going to fit. And they're like, why are we going to pull it out of the car just to reload it? Hey, we packed the car. <laughs> um, Sam may be able to work. He may, you know, not be able to work late, so we'll leave at three thirty. He may only work late a couple days that week, so we wouldn't leave till like maybe one. There, it's it's still very up in the air, and we and like it doesn't it it won't be too big of a deal um overall. Um, because you're driving, not flying that trip. We're gonna drive in December as well. This last trip kind of give you a little scare. Well, the last three times that we have flown. Um, our 2019, 2020 trip, the flight had mechanical difficulties and we were, we didn't leave Wichita until the time we were supposed to be landing in Orlando on our Christmas trip, not this last year, but the year before we were delayed an hour out of Atlanta. They turned off the air and I had an asthma attack on the plane this last year. We, uh, our flight was canceled the day prior. Um, and so it's like every time, every time Sam's like, and fly who, did you, of, who were you scheduled to fly each time? Delta. Is that typical of Delta? Because I no, booked my not. flight for, um, I booked my flight for San Diego through Delta because they didn't offer American airlines, which is where I usually use. And they've no. already changed my flight time three times. That will happen up until the day that you leave. That is Delta's thing, though. They, um, our flight time, our our departure time had changed about six times. Monday, Tuesday, our flight change time changed three times on Wednesday before they canceled it. Um, our Delta, the security opens at Wichita at four, and our plan had been for Sam to stay at the Delta desk um, and check in our bag while I went through security because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we're going or coming. I get stopped at security every time. I don't know. Maybe I look maybe I look like you don't have pre check. You should get pre check. Um we used to have it for long enough to get pre check. Um we um we used to have it free when Sam was in the National Guard, but we don't we didn't have it anymore. But every time I would get stopped for something. Um, and so Sam's like, if you go ahead and go through security, you'll be done and they'll be done patting you down or whatever. You must look um, suspicious. I must I must look horror. I must look I must look suspicious. <laughs> um and you can be through and get yourself a coffee and something to eat and wait for me and it won't take me that long. I'm like, okay. So our flight, when I booked it last July, while we were sitting in the tire shop after our, the tire incident on the way, um, uh, was we were supposed to leave at 
So our flight time what it bounced from between 515 and 550 since July. That's Delta's thing. It bounces around. It it's changed morning of. Um last the last time we flew, which was 2021, 2022, we had went we had we were flying first, so we dropped we got our luggage through um and got through security we had our coffee we were sitting there and all of a sudden there was an announcement if you were on flight whatever ours was our flight time has changed we will begin boarding in about five minutes and this was a half an hour earlier than our originally that we were supposed to start boarding and they made an announcement if you are on flight such and such and such you need to please report to the gate because we will be leaving in the next 15 minutes ridiculous but this is also why they tell you to arrive at your gate three hours early <laughs> so <coughs> but our flights from wichita to orlando and back were almost twenty five hundred dollars we spent 350 to drive there and that's including parking at disney and no it would have been 400 including parking at Disney and then at Cabana Bay. That's a that that's a lot less. A lot, yes. So Sam's like, we're just gonna drive. And if like if for some reason the route that we normally go through Tennessee is, you know, projected to be snowy, we can there's another route that we can take across Louisiana, Texas, up through Oklahoma and into Kansas. We have a secondary route we can take. But Sam's like, we're, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> but we'll get, we'll book, get everything booked on Friday, which is very exciting. And then once that's booked, um, we'll be able to um, kind of finalize like that, what we want for dining and that kind of thing. I have my spreadsheet put together to be able to insert like what we're going to be doing and whatnot. Because I have our budget breakdown and then I have our snack must do. And then I have our like, I'll share my screen. Okay. So this is one of our, so you can see down at the bottom, it says July, 2023. That's like where all the finance stuff is. I'm not showing you that. Then there's the snack must do's July vacation breakdown. And so you can see I've got what theme park we're doing, ADRs, any other activities. Like if we plan to do um, like the carriage ride or the hay rack ride or miniature golf or stuff like that. And then um, the date. So and then we just pop, pop it in. And you can see right here, I've got Garden Girl for five, Beaches and Cream for five, because this is, we're doing that with uh, Mickey sightings. And this is your spreadsheet you created? Yeah, this is just a simple yeah. spreadsheet I created. So. That, and that and that and it's shared with Sam and that way Sam can plug in things as well um, if he chooses to and that kind of thing so and like in our vacation breakdown like we have like how much we're paying on what day and that kind of thing so how much we need for food for each day and I have my uh, spreadsheet too. We typically budget um, about two hundred dollars per day for food. Um, it goes a little bit further, I think, at Universal because we do get a discount with our annual pass. Um, 
what I like at Cabana Bay is um, at breakfast, they have this, like, it's kind of in the center. It's a fresh fruit bar. And then you can make, like, a little fruit cup or a yogurt parfait or just a fruit salad. And then at lunch and dinner, it becomes a build-your-own salad salad bar. And it is priced by the ounce, just like you would, like, get it at Whole Foods or something like that. But you actually still get your pass holder discount on the salad. So funny. We went to a candy store when we were at the beach. Presley was picking out all this candy, and I was like, this is priced by the weight, not by the candy. And we get there, and it was like $30, and she freaked out. You told her. Uh, yep, we did. And you can't decide you don't want to buy it once you've got the candy in the bag. Right. Yep. Because you can't put it back. Yeah. But no, I we um. Have you been to Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater? I have. We're also going there again this time because my sister wants to go. Okay. So like in Cabana Bay, they have, it's pretty much broken up into four areas um, for like seating and stuff. And on the walls, they have these big screens and they pretty much play that type of like, per, um, like commercials and cartoons and stuff in the, in the, in the Bayliner Diner, in the dining area. And then they play 50s and 60s music all day. It's awesome. And it's themed that way, too, right? 50s, yes, it is It is themed as a 50s, uh, 50s beach resort. Um, and they actually have... Um, they don't... As of right now, they don't have, like, the shampoo conditioner and stuff on the walls it's little bottles of vo5 shampoo and cream rinse nice so it it's really neat and the they give you a two different types of zest you get a body bar and a facial bar So it's it's really if you're looking for something a little different, and they Cabana Bay does have a lazy river um, at one of the pools, but it's it is only three feet deep. But you can you can purchase or bring your own um, inner tubes and land around in the inner tube all day in it if you wanted to. They don't do the inner tubes for free. No, huh. you can get. Free inner tubes when you go to Volcano Bay, but you have to purchase them. At, but they're themed to Cabana Bay. And, like, if you bring your own, they will inflate them for you. And they will deflate them when you're done. Um, so you can pack up your inner tube and take it home and bring it back on your next trip and reinflate it. That's good. And did you see that um, at Universal, the Marvel character dinner is back? I did not see that. Yes. I'm kind of surprised that it's back with all the Marvel stuff going on at Disney. But this is something that was prior to Disney taking it over. So, That's true. Um. <clears throat> that's why you don't have any Disney's you don't have any of the main Marvel characters at Walt Disney World. Right. You have Gardens of the Galaxy, which is like the worst one. Right. I mean, I still like it, but it is the worst one. <laughs> But yeah, 
we're um we're gonna get the three room six breakfast the marvel character dinner we're going to purchase four tickets for the hollywood drive-in golf um so that we can do both sides of it and what i like about universal's hotel over disney um is that if we wanted to stay for two and a half weeks because typically our christmas trip has become a little bit longer than our... no no context okay sorry no, you're good. Um, you let if me I wanna... grab my mascara real quick. Okay. And then I'll have my lips to do and I'm done. Okay. Um what I like is so like if we wanted to stay two and a half weeks at Universal, we can even getting tickets where with at Disney you their their cutoff is two weeks if you want to be able to add tickets. Um so like in theory we could do a room only um stay and then have tickets separate but then you are paying up front for your tickets instead of paying a package and being able to pay it off over time so um it is it's it's kind of nice to know that if we wanted to do a longer trip and stay at universal the whole time we could um we're still kind of going back and forth on our christmas trip um we know that we at least want to be able to stay um the night um, before the 5k. So this last year we did like an extra one night stay at all star sports, um, to be able to utilize, uh, race transportation. So, uh, Sam and I are still kind of trying to make some decisions on that. We won't be booking that until, um, over the summer anyway. So we're just, we're still kind of in a deadlock on that, and not because we can't like we're we're like like he wants to do one way, I want to do it the other. We just we don't know what we want to do yet. You know what I mean? You don't know what you the queen like. You just don't know what you want to do all together yet. Right. We don't know if we want to like switch over to Disney for like say the second through the sixth which is like kind of what we did in 20 21 22 excuse me where we did the first part at universal and the second part at disney for for the run or if we want to stay the full book the full time at universal and then just book one or two nights over at disney but still have our like all of our stuff at cabana bay and just stay the night a couple of nights over there for like the 5k and stuff what time period are you thinking what i mean which trip is this what the this holiday? Is the christmas trip do it the other way around this year this coming year then the then the way you did it this year that way it's different well we would be if we would do it the way we did it in 2021 22 where we did universal first and disney second is what we're talking about but didn't disney have less new year stuff than universal right and so what we would do is we would switch after new year's so be at universal till through new year january right well the what we're talking about right now is being at universal until like the second of january and then being there the second through the sixth at Disney for you know marath for marathon weekend. I'll follow. Um, because um, our annual pass that we currently have is good through um, December 29th. But what we would do is we would just get a whole. We would book a new package with a new annual pass, and it would be good starting on the 30th. And so we would just use our current annual pass until the 29th. And that way we get more, we, we don't start the new pass early. It, Cause even if with tickets, you have to use them on the day that it states, but with an annual pass, it doesn't start until you like the first time you use it in the parks. So if we don't use that one until the 30th, we it won't activate until the 30th yeah
I'm doing a couple little outlines. You know I get detailed. I know you do. I think that's what made me like this look so much is like it's just unique. I do think the blue one looked better though. Uh, and one of the things, Sam and I are talking about taking a day and going over to SeaWorld because we really enjoyed that when we did that last. So we've, and Sam really enjoys some of the roller coasters and stuff there. And um, we haven't been, the, la the last time we went, I wasn't even doing my YouTube channel yet. In that, um, where the Tim Tracker's favorite r roller coaster is? Mako? Yeah. Mm hmm. Because that's Sam's favorite. Sam loves Mako. Is it so weird that we feel like we almost know the dude because he's always so, like, descriptive, really? Yeah. That's what makes his channel, like people watch his channel. He's very descriptive. He is. He is very descriptive. It's not like, yeah, this was just good. This is good. He goes into details. I think that's also why I like DFV. Because when it, they're talking about the food, they go into details. It's not just, we like this. Right. So question for you. Sure. When you watch park live streams. Mm-hmm. What is your reasoning for watching them? I enjoy being able to watch them and kind of get to see what other people like um, about or what things they like to do on theirs. Because sometimes people, they'll do rides, but sometimes they'll also do um, like... Um, they may ride something that I wouldn't, or they may try a food that I wouldn't. And I go, oh, wow, like, they kind of like the same thing I do, so maybe I might like that. And sometimes it's because I feel that I'm getting the Disney blues or the Universal blues um, or, or post-vacation blues and be like, oh, you know, yay, I get to see, you know, you know, my, my happy place. Yeah. For me, very similar response the only difference is um a lot of the time i won't even watch i'm just listening mm -hmm. because i want to hear the sounds of the park oh. but other than that much the same much the same like when i'm sitting here well, this is the desk that I sit at when I work. When I'm sitting here working, sometimes I'll just throw somebody's live stream on. I won't even say anything in chat. I'll just listen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sometimes do that as well. But yeah, sometimes it's because I'm like, I have, and Sam, Sam will agree. Um, but sometimes I'm like, oh, I won't like that, or I won't eat that, or I won't do that. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, that actually doesn't look as bad as I thought, or wow. They described that really well. I think I want to try that now. Yeah, definitely when I watch DFB or, like, um, 
what's her name? The one that was all ears dot net and Oh, Molly Mammoth Club. Yeah. So I watched her um, farts video, and it made uh -huh. me change my mind, mind on things that I didn't think I wanted to try. Yeah, we really like watching a Mammoth Club. Like we watched their. Um, the winner gets to choose rock, paper, scissors and um, videos. And we really liked that idea. And so we're going to try that on our next trip. And of course, like, we'll, we'll probably film it and give credit to them, you know, because it was their idea. Yeah. That to me is very similar to um, when I did my progressive dinner, when I went to universal in 2020 by my, on, on my own. Um, where I had appetizers at Hard Rock and I had my main my main dinner at Margaritaville and then I had dessert from uh, uh, Voodoo Donuts and Toothsome's, I think. Mm, I love Toothsome's. We got breakfast, I think it was like our last day. Am I right? It was our last day. We got Voodoo Donuts. Yeah. And the apple furniture is like bigger than Sam's hands put together. Oh, I think you posted a picture of that, didn't you? I did. It's massive. Like Sam and I could have each shared that and been fine. Definitely. Uh, I usually pick up voodoo my last day too. Like as I'm leaving, when I'm, I'm, I've got the car packed up. I'm ready to go home. I'll go over to Universal and grab it. It's so funny because uh, last time I was there, I think I was I was texting my husband. And he's like, are you on your way yet? I was like, I'm at Universal getting voodoo donuts. He's like, I thought you were coming home today. I was like, I am. He's like, well, why are you at Universal? I was like, I'm just getting donuts. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't realize that that's that it was just for that um sam and i are kind of talking about like what are we going to do on the day that you know how are we going to do the day that we leave and um, when we were coming home in december we were trying to get to paducah um in time for their 5 30 kickback so that we didn't have to worry about buying dinner we should have just bought dinner somewhere else <laughs> but we made it um but I'm like, if we're not doing that, we could in theory get up and have breakfast at um, Bayliner Diner, even go run, go over and to the park, get in a couple last minute rides and be on the road by, you know, 10, depending on where we were wanting to get to that night. It all depends on Sam because he's the one that drives. <laughs> I'm usually fine driving at night if I've got somebody with me, but if I don't, I need to drive during the day. Great. Sounds like they're tearing the house down up there. So we like we've been kind of bouncing around where we wanted to stay and whatnot and pricing different stuff. And we had talked about staying at uh, French Quarter for the two weeks um, before before we went over to Universal and stayed at Cabana Bay and just fell in love. Um, but for what we would have paid at Universal, not, you know, sorry, what we would have paid at Disney for Cabana Bay. Oh my gosh. I cannot talk what we would have paid at Disney staying at Port Orleans French quarter with, um, tickets and without, and memory maker, like no dining or anything. We will do the full two weeks at, at Cabana Bay adding in the three broomsticks breakfast if just noting if people are wondering why i keep talking about reservations at three broomsticks 
you can do a walk up now to the three broomsticks or the leaky. However, if you purchase it as a ticket, you get to select your day and it becomes a combo. You get your drink and your um, meal together instead of having to pay separately. And it ends up being cheaper, FYI. Um, we'll have the breakfast, we'll have mini golf, and we will have um, our four days of park tickets and our parking for those days. And we will save $150. Can you make reservations at those places without the ticket thing package? Um, breakfast, you can just walk up, but you will like, instead of saying, okay, here's my voucher for my breakfast. Um, and they just bought, like you, they just put it in and type in the code off of your ticket. You don't pay anything. You would be paying separately for like, if you wanted pumpkin juice or if you wanted butter beer or whatever, and then you pay separately for your meal instead of it being prepaid in a combo. And it ends up being cheaper. Um, what before, when they first reopened after COVID, it you had to select a time and you had to select a date and you could only get in with that breakfast voucher. They were checking at the door, but now oh, you can go in. lunch and dinner are, have always been walk up basis only. Okay. And it is still that way. Mascara and lips is all I got left now. And, you know, what, what's nice is that, like, if Sam and I decide, hey, we want to go over to um, Disney Springs for dinner, because, like, maybe we want to go to Polite Pig. Have you eaten at Polite Pig? Yep. It is so good. Um, if we want to go to Polite Pig, we can. If we want to go over to Amaretts, we can. If we want to skip Gideon's, which we will, <laughs> we don't like Gideon's. I think it's horribly disgusting. I like it. I don't. It's it's to me it's overrated and overpriced. But for those pro probably people probably feel that way about amarettes, and I love amarettes. Amarettes is expensive, but I love it. See, I don't think to amarettes really isn't that much pricier than Gideon's. Maybe it's just because when I go to amarettes, I get like five things, and when I go to Gideon's, I get like one cookie. See that that's the difference. Like <laughs> Sam and I, Sam and I about the Do you like the ganachery? Haven't been, we haven't been to the ganachery. Sam, we need to try the ganachery. It's expensive um, too, but it's good. I like their s'mores. Um, what where is it? Um I think it's, it's, it's fairly big. close to um, Gideon's. It's on that uh, side. I think I think it's big fire at universal has like a little s'mores dessert that you can roast your marshmallows there at the at your table at the ganachery they make if you order a s'more they make it for you right then and you can look in the window because they where they make it and watch them make it for you oh that's cool i don't know that they have it during the summer and spring but they definitely have it during the fall and winter Last summer, I did a build. I did a build your own Mickey caramel apple or a Mickey. No, it was a it was a design your own Rice Krispie treat, and that was a lot of fun. It just ended up. I highly recommend if when they ask you if you want the um, chocolate on both sides of the Rice Krispie treat, tell them no. It makes it really hard to eat, and it makes it really, um, really sweet. Rice Krispie treats are sweet already. Yeah. So how, like, if I could, if I had, if I could go back and change that, I would. Um, I would tell him no, just on one side, and really, I'd probably say only dip like the ears and like half, like the top. Yeah. Okay. 
But no, Sam and I really liked the Polite Pig. We got the butcher board, which gives you a sampling of kind of everything on the menu. And then we got the pretzel and beer cheese, and it was so good. That was where? At Polite Pig. Oh, yeah. We got the appetizer scene for like pick three. We got it twice. Oh. We picked six different ones. Definitely get the budget. Like, because if you price out how much, like, a, like two different things are um, off of the plate pig, it almost equals the price of the butcher board. And then you get to try, like, multiple different things. Like I said, we got the we got the pretzel and beer cheese, and the pretzel was amazing. Mm. And it was like even really good cold because they serve it to you hot. I think we got the pretzel while we were there. I know we got uh, the broccoli. Or not the broccoli, the, um, was it broccoli? Shoot, I don't remember. We had six different things. And I think that's what you're talking about, the butcher board, where you get to pick three. Mm -mm, the butcher board is on the, it's a set menu. Because we did the, pick three appetizer thing they had it was combo and we we ordered it twice like she ordered it i ordered it and we picked six different things i'm trying to pull up what it's called i may be calling it the wrong thing no i'm not seeing the the menu thing on here but it's that we looked at. They're like, no menu for you. No menu for me. All right, let's. Yeah, the, we got the hop salt pretzel. It was $10 and it came with a beer cheese fondue and an IPA mustard. It was so good. Sticky. Yeah, we got we got the butcher board. It was forty five dollars. It comes with pork, smoked chicken, brisket, cheddar sausage, two things of slaw, pickles, two cornbreads, and then you get to pick two sides. And so Sam and I each picked a side, and I I picked the um I picked the macaroni and cheese, I think, and I can't remember what Sam picked. I'm trying to look at the sides. I think you may have got the the bean, the baked beans. He either got the baked beans or the potato salad. I don't remember. But it was really good. And like when you look at the like the sandwiches, like the southern pig is $13. The brisket's $15. Um, the smoked turkey BLT is 14. Um, or if you look down here, if you go from the smoker, half, you know, the half a chicken is 19, the brisket is 22. It really made more sense for the two of us to spend the 45 and get the butcher board because then we each got to try each other's sides. We each got our own slaw. We each, we got to try several different of the meat. So it really did make sense and we would 100% get it again. So like the, we typically, like I said, we typically budget about $200 per day um, for food. And so we, we kind of talked a little bit about it in the car um, this morning when we were out and about the, the days that, because we're going to have a four day ticket over to Disney, the days that we have the, our Disney days, what we will end up doing is we'll budget a 250 that, um, and the, the 50 will be in cash and the 200 will be on a Disney gift card. And it'll be, we use envelopes and every day gets an envelope. And we just use, this is actually my baggie of extra envelopes I took with us just in case. We just use regular envelopes and we'll write the date, where we'll be that day and how much is in the envelope. Um, if it's a Disney day, it'll have a Disney gift card in it. 
and we have one specific gift card that we always have on us and we i just load the that day's gift card into the disney gift card one and transfer it over to our main one and we keep a spare we typically have our wrist cards on us too oh i talked about the cider flight that we got at tangerine cafe i actually have a little card right here i know oh. you're just we're just about done but if you get a flight you get this little card and we got the Three Daughters Brewing Cranberry Hard Cider. I really liked that one. The Woodchuck Winter Chill Hard Cider. That was the second one I liked. And the Cider Boys Mad Bark Hard Cider, Sam really liked. So. Yeah. And then I have all of these Mickey gift cards that I, we use for making payments. And there's nothing on them. I keep them until we're home. But then um, today I'll find get them all out of my drawer, throw them away, and then we'll be able to start fresh for our next trip. The only ones that I keep are like the character style because um, we know that those are specialty cards. I know you're about done, so I'll go ahead and start the wrap-up stuff. Coming up on the channel is some vlogs from vacation. Like I said earlier, it'll be Sam and I talking and a photo montage. That is just how it's going to go for the Christmas trip. I got nothing coming up. You've got a trip coming up. That's true. But you don't typically vlog your trips. No, I usually um, put them on my sh on um, my stories on TikTok or Instagram. Are you going to plan to vlog any of your trips this time? Um, I'll do a room tour for all the rooms I'm in, like I did last time, but that's really all I have planned. Are you planning to vlog your experience at the expo? I didn't think about it. I don't really know. Sure. And you know how the X, the X, the um, merchandise works now, right? Well, so yeah, but I'm I don't even plan to go over there until like 4 p.m. I wouldn't wait that long. Why? Um, because you're gonna want to go get your um shirt and make sure that it fits. Aren't they still open at four? Did you get it? Here's the thing. The thing that happened this year is some of the shirts came in in the wrong type of cut and style, and people who got in late weren't able to exchange the sh their shirt for the right type. So the earlier that you are in line to over there to, for bib pickup, the better off you are to ensure that your shirt fits. But bib pickup is still open at 4 p.m., yeah? Yes. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it then. I'm not doing it for the shirt. I'm doing it for the experience. Well, the expo in and of itself is, a, is an experience. And don't forget that there's like vendors and stuff, you know, that you can go check out and get freebies and pictures and all kinds of stuff at too. I think I did everything. I guess, did I do everything? Yeah, looks good. Oh yeah. Well, are you are we all done? Yeah, I'm just gonna do a little white line around my lip a little bit. I think I did that last time. Let me check on my last time. <laughs> my reference this time was a picture of me. I didn't do it last time. Okay, we're good. Okay. But I feel like my lips need to be thicker. I think they look fine. But it's about 1 30 and i have stuff i have to get done for work tomorrow and sam's lost to do his quiz and all kinds of stuff this afternoon so there yeah, that worked i just did a little yeah. shading right under the lid oh yeah that looks that works i was like something's missing i think it was that all right thank you for joining
Of course. And um, like, like Christy said, it's going to be a busy couple of months for her. So um, definitely make sure if you're not, hit the notifications bar so that you know when Christy uh, plans another magical makeup live stream. Yep, because it's sporadic, to say the least. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye.